Hey there everybody, this is Jonathan from Hiking in SC. Today I am out here doing a quick 9.1 miles or something like that. Um, going from Chimney Top Gap on the Foothills Trail to a place called Narrow Falls. It is a foggy, as you can see behind me, foggy fall day. Um, and it is absolutely gorgeous out here but today I wanted to talk with you about something I call a post hike checklist now I've checked on YouTube and you can usually find all kinds of checklists hiking checklists and all that kind of stuff but I haven't found anything that says post hike checklist although I have found things that say post through hike blah 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 today I want to talk to you about what you do after you get back so if you're into reading at all there's a author his name is David Allen and he wrote a book called getting things done in there he talks about how your brain works and if you've ever noticed you usually remember to do things when you're at rest and you're not out here under stress so you lie in bed at night and you remember oh I need to pack my bag or do some laundry that kind of stuff but then you quickly forget if you don't write it down and you forget to do what you are kicking yourself for forgetting out here you would behoove yourself to either carry paper and pencil or uh, apps in your phone such as Evernote that's one that I use to make yourself a checklist so that you can take notes as you're hiking and running into problems out here on the trail so I actually have a few checklists they're broken up so they can be kind of modularized one is a day hike checklist one is multi-day and one is photography video so I have them broken up so that you can just take the bag from the day hike bag and shove it right into the big multi-day bag and you add your sleep system and your cooking system and you're pretty much good to go now I'm gonna put some things in here today um, that you may want to remember to do when you get home to make your next hike a lot easier as a quick side note today it is what a lot of people would call dreary and there is zero breeze whatsoever no wind well in terms of photography that is a good thing um, because what it does is it makes for great motion photos so when I say motion you don't want motion in the leaves and the trees because if you were to shoot like a waterfall and you wanted the water to look like it was uh, moving you wouldn't want the trees and the leaves to be moving also you want those to be frozen and today with no breeze that can be perfectly accomplished so right now we are about two miles in it has been mostly downhill and if you've been around for a while you know what that means that means on the way back it's gonna be mostly uphill so we are moving through let me show you right around let me turn this around we're at the road uh, we are coming down to the road and this one if you look right where that white car is going right over there that is the way 
that takes you to the Horse Pasture River and one of the last hikes that I did which is Laurel Fork Falls that's where you go so that's where we're gonna be returning when we go up turn you around this is the road right here that's Laurel Valley Road right there and we're still gonna keep going so I just wanted to show you what it looks like out here so far I have seen seven people and three dogs so I would probably not recommend this trail here for uh, kids like this is kind of a long stretch but so far it's pretty easy going downhill I would imagine that the moderate part of this trail is gonna be returning up right here this is an edible plant right here as you can see there's a lot of it right there but we're gonna keep on rolling oh look at this So when you come up the Laurel Valley Road, you're going to look for this little sign that says to Esatoi Creek Heritage Preserve, Esatoi Gorge Spur Trail. And it would appear that it has a yellow blaze. Right here is the little fire road fence. So we're going to head down here. So we're just going to keep that yellow blaze in mind because right there is another one. So we know we're good to go. Here on this sign uh, it says primitive camping here only and it's pointing down to the narrows. Um, it says primitive camping is open in a designated area only. Uh, at the Heritage Preserve there is approximately enough space for three campsites and no group camping is available. Um, if the sign below indicates a vacancy and you plan to camp, please slide the sign to indicate an occupied site. So you cannot have a campfire down there, but I think that would be pretty cool going down to where we're going. So hopefully it'll be pretty cool down there. What am I talking about when I say a post hike checklist? So I made a few little notes right here. Now. I talked to you about using Evernote, but you can also use uh, location-based reminders in your iPhone if you have one, and it'll remind you to do certain things when you get home. If you're like me, you have a checklist for, like I said, day hikes and multi-day hikes. But what happens is, if you don't update things when you get home from the last hike, <clears throat> you're going to throw the same crap back in your bag, even if it's broken, empty or things like that and when you get out on the next hike you're gonna kick yourself for not remembering to fix certain things as an example if you're like me you're gonna forget to replace the retention string on your mummy bag and you're gonna feel like it's a dummy bag the next time you go out on your hike because you should have taken care of that or you may end up using your ice bandage for toilet paper um, in a pinch pun intended i mean it looks like toilet paper right 
but these are the kind of things that you learn that you should have taken care of when you got home from the last time. For example, things that you may want to write down are things that need maintenance, such as back flush in your water filter. Also, things that you need to empty out, like your trail trash bag, used toiletry bag, camera memory cards. Also included are things to charge up, like your power banks, your Garmin, your phone charger, or your phone batteries, and camera batteries along with a headlamp if you use a rechargeable one. Now, you're also going to want to remember things to fill back up, such as toilet paper, batteries, stove fuel, electrolytes, and or gel packs for energy. Now, these can also be things like sharpening your knife, sharpening your axe, replenishing things like fire starters, remembering to put earplugs back in your bag so that when you're out there hammock camping and all you hear is crickets and cicadas and all that noise out there, you can put earplugs in to keep the noise out. It can also be a time to write down things that did not perform as expected, such as your uh, sleeping pad, things that need maintenance or repair, um, such as patching a sleeping pad, um, water seal in your tent if it did not work for you the last time, um, also equipment that needs to be replaced or upgraded, such as finding that your water filter um, is too slow or didn't do exactly what you thought it was going to do. You don't want to just keep that same stuff, even though it's broken, back in the rotation for the next time because you're going to be hating life when you get out here. Another thing you may want to refill is your bug spray. Think of anything that runs out or needs to be filled up or has run out and left you high and dry in the past. As I always say, hiking and or camping backpacking is almost like your little test uh, guinea pig uh, in a test lab. So you're always kind of testing new things and seeing what works and what doesn't for you. But as part of that, if you don't remember or have a way of remembering to do things when you get home, each successive trip may uh, be a little more and more frustrating. So if you remember to keep some notes and write down things that you've got to fix, change, replace, or refill, you're going to say, thank you, you crazy trail hiking fool for telling me to make a post hike checklist. Here's a little flat area, absolutely surrounded by trees everywhere. Now we just came up a um, moderate uphill. Uh, looks like we're going a little more uphill, uh, but later on we're going to be going downhill. So we are moving right along. I heard a joke one time. And it said, if at first you don't succeed, skydiving is not for you. Well, that's not how hiking is. Hiking is a constant series of refinements. So at first you buy a piece of gear, you go, you test it out. Sometimes you're like, oh, this is awesome. Sometimes you're like, this thing's a piece of junk and I should leave it out here on the trail, but don't do that. But you are going to constantly be paring down and paring down and adapting things and trying out certain pieces of equipment. Look right here. So on this sign, it says you are here. That's me, not you. Um, but we're going to go from here. We're going down there. We're going to go to this place where it says primitive camping. Um, we have a little arrow and across the road we have the yellow blaze. As soon as you walk in the door to your nice toasty house, let me just tell you, you're going to plop on the couch or plop in bed once you get all this gear off and you're going to just 
kick back and maybe try to relax and be like, oh, thank you, Lord, that's over. But let me just tell you, that's the worst thing you can do if you haven't made a list because all your gear is going to stay in your bag. Your water bladder is going to grow mold and mildew in it. Your water filter is going to do the same thing. So your batteries are not going to get charged. All the things that you thought about on trail, spider web, are going to quickly fall out of your mind. And the next time you go to hike, good Lord, look at that spider web. I don't know if you can see it, but spider webs mean nobody's been down this trail. So I'm the first victim down here. But it means that the next time you go hiking, all of your stuff is going to be just as you left it last time. That is not a good thing. You can still go home, plop yourself on the couch, if you have a list, and rest assured that you'll be able to address some of the issues that you had last time and fix them before you go out on your next trip. If you are a YouTuber, vlogger, that kind of thing, uh, you also have to remember to clear your memory cards into your computer and start that process. Make your thumbnail, upload your video, edit, charge your GoPro batteries, and your microphones. But these are things that are unique to people that use cameras out here. So for the normal average hiker, you won't have to worry about these things. Watch the narrows. Um, there's a little sign that says narrows to the right. Well, you can go either way. Um, to the right, looks like it was a little more traveled. Down here, going to the left of that sign is where the primitive camping is. Um, I'll turn you around and show you the sign. primitive camping so down here I got all the way down here and I didn't see a soul um, right down here I got two uh, fly fishermen were down here and two guys camping in the campsite next door right here we're gonna look and you remember what I said about no campfires that would appear to be one um, just saying so, it looks like someone really took the primitive camping um, seriously because they have a primitive either A, chair, or B, um, leprechaun, leprechaun bed. Over here we have maybe the baby leprechaun bed. Um, over there appears to be a kind of bushcraft shelter going on um but we are right on the banks of the river i mean it's like right there you may be able to hear the water um now as far as non-primitive things we have soup can and copenhagen lids uh some kind of grill mesh and aluminum foil those type of people didn't take the primitive camping very seriously. Um, today, I'm probably not going to take the right-hand trail that said to the Narrows. Um, this is the one that I was coming down here to see and had marked on all trails. So now we're going to start heading back after I use the restroom. Um, and we're going to head back and do the harder section of this hike so let the fun begin so guys thanks for following along on this hike um, right now I'm showing you that we are at the Beach Bottom Falls Trail and this is where you're gonna park but the actual trail starts up there so you want to follow the road a little bit up the ways here and you'll be able to see where the trail starts you'll see a big sign that says chimney top gap now 
like I figured, the hard part of the trail was definitely on the way back. I originally saw on all trails that it was going to be about 9.6 miles or 9.3. Uh, looking on there right now, it's more like uh, close to 12.6. Um, so I haven't been to this Beach Bottom Falls trail right here, but one day I'll have to uh, see where it goes. But anyways, what I'm going to do is if you are addicted to anything hiking like I am, I'm going to put two videos right over here to your right that are going to give you more hints, tips and tricks for hiking this incredible state of ours, South Carolina. Now, get out there and hike.